All right, so we're going to work through another example here. And this example is going to be kind of a combo. So we're going to combine limiting reactant, theoretical yield, the actual yield, and percent yield. Okay, all in one go. So let's use um, this reaction here. We're going to take three moles of nitrogen dioxide. We're going to react that with some water. And we're going to form HNO3, which this is called nitric acid. Not a name you have to know, just letting you know. And we're going to form some nitrogen monoxide, too. All right. So let's say that, um, let's do 20 grams of NO2 and 20 grams of water. So 20 grams of each of those are reacted. Let's say 30 grams of nitric acid was obtained. What was the percent yield? So we have some things that are, are given to us, right? We know that we're starting with 20 grams of nitrogen dioxide. We have 20 grams of water. And we know we're going to end up with 30 grams of nitric acid. So first off, in order to figure out the percent yield, I remember percent yield is our actual divided by our theoretical okay, times 100. So our actual yield is going to be our 30 grams. Okay, because that's what was obtained when the experiment was performed. So that's our actual. Then we have to figure out our theoretical yield. Okay, so our theoretical yield is going to be between these two calculations. We're going to have to determine our limiting reactant between our 20 grams of nitrogen dioxide and our 20 grams of water. Okay. So here's where we have to do that to the two different calculations. And we're going to follow that pathway of grams of A to moles of A to moles of B to grams of B. So let's start with 20 grams of nitrogen dioxide. That's going to be one calculation. And then we have a second calculation of our 20 grams of water. So I encourage you to pause the video and try and fill these uh, conversions out on your own. Remember grams of A to moles of A to moles of B to grams of B. Okay, so you're going to use your periodic table for your molar mass and then use your stoichiometry for your mole-to-mole -mole ratios. Okay. So go ahead and pause the video, and I'll show you the solutions when you get back. All right, so first calculation. We're starting with grams of NO2. So we're going to put grams of NO2 in the denominator. Then we're going to moles of NO2, so that'll go up top. 
we use our periodic table okay, to figure out our molar mass. So we have 14.01 for our nitrogen plus 2 times 16 for oxygen. We get 46.01. Remember that's per one mole, always per one mole. Next up is our mole to mole conversion, our stoichiometry. We want to go from moles of NO2, and it goes in the denominator, so those units cancel. Then we want to go to moles of our product. And to determine the limiting reactant, it doesn't matter. But in this case, because one of our products has been chosen, that's what our actual yield is in, it's going to save us a calculation to calculate our uh, theoretical yield while we're doing our limiting reactant uh, calculation. So uh, we want to choose moles of HNO3, nitric acid, to convert to. We use our coefficients here, so we have 3 in front of nitrogen dioxide. We have a 2 in front of nitric acid. Then our last step in this first calculation is to convert from moles of HNO3 to grams of HNO3. So hydrogen is 1.008, nitrogen is 14.01, then we have what, three oxygens, so three times 16, and a molar mass of 63.018 grams per one mole. So we can do this calculation here. I start with my 20 grams of nitrogen dioxide, multiply by 1, divide by 46.01, times 2, divided by 3, times 63.018. Three sig figs in my starting value, so I need three sig figs in my answer. So I have six or 18.26211, so I have 18.3 grams of nitric acid. All right, so that's our first calculation. We have to do the similar calculation now with our water. So we want to go grams of water to moles of water. Use our molar mass. We have two hydrogens times 1.008 plus our oxygen. So we have 18.016. And remember that's per one mole. Molar mass is always per one mole. Now we go moles of water to moles of nitric acid. Remember, we want to stick with the same product. So we have one mole, that's our from our stoichiometry. And we have two moles of nitric acid. And then our last step, just like the one above, we want to go from moles of nitric acid to grams of nitric acid. We have 63.018 grams per one mole. So we plug these into our calculator. 20 times 1 divided by 18.016 times 2 divided by 1 times 63.018 divided by 1, and we get 139.9156, okay, three sig figs, so I have 139, I have to round up, so that ends up being 140, and I need my decimal point there.
That seems a little high, so I'm just going to verify. So 20 divided by 18.016 times 2 times 63.018. That's right. So definitely a big difference here. Definitely going to run out of something first. So what is our maximum amount of product that we can form? That is our 18.3 grams of nitric acid. So that is our theoretical yield, which makes when we started out here, our 20 grams of nitrogen dioxide, that is our limiting reactant. So now we can calculate our percent yield. Our percent yield is our actual yield. Actual is 30.0 grams of nitric acid divided by our theoretical 18.3 times by 100. We have 30 divided by 18.3 times 100 and we get 164% yield. Now yes, this seems very strange, okay? Because what we're basically saying is we ended up with more product than we should have, okay? Which on occasion, when you do chemical uh, eat, chemical reactions, on occasion you're going to end up with a percent yield that's higher than 100%. Okay, that doesn't necessarily mean that the calculations were wrong, although they could be. Okay, in this case I double checked mine just to make sure. Okay, but basically when you get a percent yield that's higher than 100% when you're doing a or performing a calculation, usually what that indicates to you is uh, most of the time it's because you don't have pure reagents, so there's more um, kind of stuff in there than you anticipated. Okay. Um, or there could have been a side reaction that happened. Uh, so instead of getting uh, the nitric acid that you wanted, um, perhaps a second reaction happened. Um, maybe you uh, burned product. Whenever you burn something, it incorporates oxygen from the air. So that's going to add to your mass of your final product. Okay, so that's going to always bump up your percent yield. So in chemistry, you know, in theory, yes, a yield, percent yield of greater than 100% shouldn't happen, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. Okay, it happens actually more than you would think. And usually it's because there's a side reaction that happens um, or your reagents are not pure and you have a bunch of impurities in there that are adding to the mass.